Hello everyone and welcome to Kitty Treats, the bite-sized show where I put my teeth into some delicious subjects to snack on. A little while ago I was watching a episode of South Park. I know the show is kind of garbage, but this episode and a few others made me think. For those who don't watch US television, South Park is a long-running animated TV show that is kind of infamous for its provocative nature. It debuted in 1997 and it follows the adventures of a group of elementary school kids in the titular town of South Park, Colorado. The episodes are usually about some kind of political viewpoint that's common at the time period that the episode is made in and it often turns it into a ridiculous farce. This and a large amount of animated gore and sexual themes are why the show was kind of infamous for quite some time. Now, usually are these themes and stories pretty mindless and nonsensical, but sometimes episodes get really close to actually hitting an important subject and pointing out some flaws within US society. Now the episode I want to talk about is episode 11 from season 16, Going Native. This episode originally aired on October 17, 2012. The plot kind of goes as follows. Butters, one of the characters, begins acting up at school, acting all aggressive and beating people up without provocation. When his parents learn about this, they get distressed and tell him that he is, quote unquote, a native Hawaiian, and that he must travel back to his birthplace of Hawaii to complete a coming of age ritual called Hapanoa. So Butters and Kenny travel to Hawaii and when they arrive there, they find that all the natives that Butters belong to are rich white people that have timeshares on the islands, visited in the holiday periods and have appropriated actual native Hawaiian cultures. While the real actual native Hawaiians work shit jobs in the tourism industry. So the theme this episode is alluding to is how white people often appropriate actual Hawaiian culture and are, generally speaking, assholes towards the native people. I say alluding to because it is mostly subtext and never actually addressed in the episode itself. I think a total of two actual native characters appear in the episode and they have a combined screen time of maybe 10 seconds and 4 words of text. There is an airport employee who asks Butters if he can help him and spend the rest of his time glaring at the rich white people that pick up Butters and there's a drive-in restaurant employee that gives food to the aforementioned rich white Americans. I think that this is really the crux of the problem that, that I have with this episode. It alludes to an important social issue on the Hawaiian Islands, but it never rocks the boats too much and never actually addresses it directly. The rest of the story is basically drivel about other US tourists coming to the island and the fake natives being pissed about that. Again, it alludes to something, but it never addresses it directly. This kind of annoys me because it could be so much more. This episode could be a great vehicle talking about the racist crap many actual Hawaiians experience from white tourists and how they're treated badly. Instead of doing that however, they basically just shove a plot element involving Elvis Presley into the story and basically return to Ronald Mill's South Park stuff. It also kind of reminds me of the deleted scene from Lilo and Stitch which actually directly addressed the racism native people experience in a very unsubtle and thus good way. However, this was cut from the final film by the censor munchkins at Disney. This is something I see more often in especially US made media. It often alludes to a problem in society but it never actually directly addresses it and takes care not to challenge the status quo too much. YouTube content creator Shona Lika actually made a video about the TV show Brooklyn Nine-Nine that does the same thing. This is a video I would highly recommend you watch if you want more examples of this. I think that the reason shows do this is actually quite obvious. Money. If they talk about this, they risk alienating part of their fanbase and thus make people boycott the show and lose the money. Now obviously, me being a person with vampire-like skin complexion, I cannot really talk about the racism native Hawaiian people experience. I'm a very Dutch person who has never left Europe and has never really experienced being shat on by white fuckheads for my skin color. With that said, I do dislike how a show that prides itself upon being as provocative as possible refuses to do stuff like this. 
You have episodes where Justin Bieber gets eaten by Cthulhu, but you don't talk about the systemic issues that would be perfectly suited for a parody show like South Park. This shows to me that the writers are either unable or unwilling to actually challenge the status quo, and it makes me sad. You have a show where you could do so much in terms of criticizing stuff in society, but it gets barely utilized. South Park has a huge reach, and if they were to actually address issues like this in a non-subtle way, way, they could reach a lot of people and, you know, just inform them. Now, I know that South Park is fucking garbage, and that I should not be surprised. But I keep encountering people that uphold it like it is some kind of god of parody and social sat satire, and I'm just here like, you what, mate? Are we watching the same fucking show? I could go on about the fake progress many shows like this make, but I think I've made my point. This is supposed to be a treat after all, and not a full course meal. I thank you all for watching, let me know if you want to see more bite sized videos like this. Hello there! Guess you did not expect me showing up at the end of this video. I am recording this little tidbit here because I want to give an update on what I've been up to and where I want to go in regards to the near future of this channel. You may have noticed that I've released a lot more shorter videos in a relatively short time span. This was not planned. I wrote the scripts for most of these videos during my little hiatus. With the release of this video, however, I managed to catch up on all of my scripts that I wrote and I can actually, hopefully, go back to writing longer and more interesting videos. With that said, I'm in a bit of a conundrum. While it has become very clear to me that I do like, to a certain extent, creating videos like this, I am not sure how professional I want to make it. Part of me wants a, larger, wants a larger audience, but a larger audience also comes with a lot more issues, and I'm not sure if I prepared or even want that. In fairness, to be honest, I'm not expecting my channel to grow much larger like this anytime soon. While I have been gaining more viewers and subscribers, progress has been very slow, and I've noticed that the timing of when I release my video at what time of the week is actually really important for stuff like this. I will be continuing to create videos, but I want to expand my horizons a bit. At the moment I'm very much a talk in the microphone or talk to the camera channel. And while I like doing that, there are more video essays on YouTube nowadays than there are war criminals in the White House. I feel like I'm imitating better YouTubers in this regard, and I want to do something that's hopefully a bit more original but also more fun for me to make and for people to watch. I started out the channel creating simple self-help videos for people on the autism spectrum, using my own experience as a guideline. And I kind of want to go back to this. I think I can do a lot more talking about my own struggles in my daily life and giving advice on how to deal with that than talking about socio-economic theory I barely understand. Instead of just talking to the camera and giving a lecture, I also want to create more sketches. It is true that I've stated in the past that creating sketches for me right now is pretty difficult, but I still want to give it a shot. I'm also actively looking to move somewhere else, somewhere which is hopefully a bit larger than where I currently live, which should hopefully make the sketches a bit more viable. So, what does this mean, practically speaking? Well, first of all, it means I will release my videos around a certain time period from now on. I'm not going to adhere to a certain schedule, because my activities outside of making videos are honestly too chaotic and unplanned for that. But I will see if I can release a videos at a more fixed time, at a more fixed time period. So currently I'm thinking releasing videos at Saturdays around 1900 hours Central European time or Central European summer time. For those who live in North America, I believe, but don't quote me on that, that that is, um, let's see, I believe that would be roughly around six hours earlier for you and about 10 hours earlier for people living on the west coast. Um, it also means that I'll be deviating from the video essay norm a bit. 
it will still be analyzing, but also be less talk, more show. A sketch says more than a thousand words, after all, so I want to try something which will hopefully illustrate what I'm talking about in a more productive way. I also want to pick up my 3D modeling skills again. I've been slacking a lot in this regard, and I think that creating simple 2D models for the purpose of illustration would be a good way to practice this. As for the subject matter, I've always been kind of loose regarding which subjects I make videos about. I will continue this of course, but I will also try to give certain videos about certain meta subjects, like <coughs> bread tube, <coughs> to a minimum. I have noticed in myself that I have a tendency to get bogged down in certain discourse and I find it to be annoying and pointless and unproductive, so there will hopefully be none of that. So uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope I will see you all in the near future for some new cool stuff.